Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, coming to you with another free tea video, and today is a mail day. Uh, I put a little post out on my social media that I was looking for a 30, well, a set of 32 Ford uh, radiator tanks, and uh, I had a bunch of people respond. Uh, the key thing that a lot of people missed is I said I'm only using the tanks and I need them cheap, so... Uh, I got a lot of people trying to sell me radiators for three, four, five hundred dollars, and uh, that wasn't going to work. So uh, Spencer C uh, sent me a message and said that he had pretty much the perfect radiator for what I needed, and uh, basically he was gracious enough to offer it to me for just the cost of shipping. It was something he had laid, laying around and didn't have a use for. So. Um, I just got it. I'm going to open it up. We'll take a look at it. And what we're going to do is actually shorten the radiator today and get it ready for the radiator shop so he can record. it. So uh, let's open it up and see what kind of shape it's in. Now I will note this thing costs like 65 or 70 bucks just to ship. And Moon, of course, thinks it's something for him inside. No, buddy. So, Spencer packed this pretty well. And I'm probably going to have to wreck the box to get it out of here. Yes. All right. Boom. So, Cool thing about this is, um, this is an original uh, 32 radiator, which is cool. Uh, it's been filled at some point. Uh, it is dented up a little bit on the top. Beggars can't be choosers, but when we pull this all apart, um, I can have the radiator shop just do a little bit of hammer and dolly work to get this brought back up and into shape. Uh, the other part that I thought was cool, this is an old hot rod radiator. So this radiator at some point, uh, was converted to be used on an overhead valve engine, I believe, and or it was on a peaked or, or filled 32 uh, grill, and they put a neck off to the side. Nice thing about that is the old uh, section 32 grill on the T also has been filled. So I was going to need to do that anyways, and it's been done. So the one thing um, that we need to do here is we need to chop this down in the center and lower it down, of course. And then also, we're going to have to have another neck added here. And it doesn't look like it's ever been, it looks like it might be actually an original uh, B radiator for a banger, um, which is okay. But what we're going to need to do is put another neck down in here, uh, take this neck off, and we're going to have to do some modifications to get it so that we can uh, get the dual necks on both sides for a V8 car, which we will work on. So I'm going to get this cut apart, show you guys how I get these all set up for uh, the radiator shop and get it mocked up, and then uh, we'll take it off to the radiator shop uh, later this week.
so we got the, uh, the, the radiator chopped and we got it sitting back on. I'm all psyched because everything fit up real nice. Our cut was good. Using the, uh, the Eastwood um, electric body saw made that job awesome with cutting the core. But here's what I didn't calculate to happen. Dun, dun, dun. Nothing freaking fits. So I didn't kind of think of how far back the tank sits on this. And I knew we were going to have a problem with a fan, but we are basically with this neck right in line with the belts on the engine. That's not going to work, number one. Number two, obviously the bracket for the, um, for the radiator stays or, or um, bars, that's not going to work. Now the other thing, I knew the radiator was going to be tiny. I mean, I knew that. But it, it's really, really, really tiny. And I could gain because the grill is actually channeled a little bit on top of being uh, sectioned, I could gain down here in this area from here to here that much core in the radiator by moving the grill back, um, or I'm sorry, forward in front of the axle. I was kind of fighting that. I really didn't want to do it just for looks wise. I kind of wanted, I like the grill to be in line with the axle, but on this it's going to be a compromise. I think we're going to have to do it. So by moving the radiator, basically the, the width of the radiator, putting it in front of the cross member um, and kind of hanging down like the grill has, which is really common with cars of this era. They used to do it all the time. Um, it's just something that I was not as excited to do. So what we're going to do is just kind of mock it up with the grill sitting in front of the cross member here with the radiator kind of just carefully sitting. We'll stand back and take a look at it just to show the difference, but also we're gonna take a look and see what kind of space we're gonna gain and clearance here by doing that. So we'll I'll move that and I'll show you here in a second. Alright, so what we're doing here, I decided after staring at everything, is that I, what I really need to do to get some radiator capacity and also to make things jive a little better with, with clearance is I'm going to put the radiator actually in front uh, of the cross member and we're going to move the grill with that forward just a little bit. It's a compromise, but I think it's the best way to get the capacity and also get the clearance we need so that everything will line up and work a little easier and I'm not fighting myself. So. What I need to do by doing that is I think I need to use the Model A top tank because it fits in the, in the radiator a little better and we can put the necks up towards the top. So what I need to do, uh, this is real life, I messed up by cutting basically too much and I need to redo these straps on the side or add some in. No big deal, we got a welder, I'll find a guy that can weld it back together maybe, we'll see. Um, so what we're doing is I, pulled the, I need to pull the straps off this 32 uh, top tank and put them, tra transfer them over to the Model A uh, top tank so that we can keep working with everything we have here. So I already took the one off and I want to show you guys uh, how you can take these off. If you need to take these brackets off of one of these radiators on these early Ford uh, or most cars of this era, they're really just soldered on. So they're not welded. Sometimes they're riveted, but especially these side brackets and these top uh, brackets on these to hold the grill and stuff and the, the rods, they're usually just soldered on. So what you need to do, uh, if you have a propane torch, uh, you can do this and it's a little slower. If you turn a softer flame on and keep it kind of lower um, with an oxyacetylene torch and you're, hold it back a little further, you can melt the solder out and with a pair of pliers, just kind of pull it off. Just got to be careful that you are mindful, you're not putting too much heat into it because a lot of these have copper uh, tanks and you can easily blow a hole in them. So basically what you do is you start heating in here like this and you'll start to see the lead usually in these holes they have some solder in there so you kind of just dance the flame and you'll hear it start to pop a little bit and keep melting like that and it will basically just fall off 
So that's that's the process.
All right, so it's, uh, let's see, after midnight on probably the third or fourth or fifth little evening or session of working on doing this radiator grill placement project that I've started. Um, when I started this, I was like thinking it would be pretty darn easy. I've done the radiator thing before, and uh, you know, you just kind of chop it, cut it, put it together, splice it, and uh, get it mocked up for the radiator guy, and it's all good to go. Uh, this one was not that easy by any means. Um, so what I ran into, and I, I kind of skipped through some of this uh, just because there was many iterations of what I was doing here. So the first one, basically, like uh, I think I mentioned earlier, was when I shortened the radiator, it was a little too short, and it also, being on top of the cross member, just jammed it into the engine. We couldn't even run a fan. Everything was going to hit. Nothing was going to work. So I had to uh, kind of rethink the grill placement. And early on in the project, uh, I was really against putting the grill out in front of the uh, cross member. I really liked it in the center line of the wheels. And uh, I was kind of against that, even though a lot of the cars back in the day, uh, that's what you saw because of this issue I'm having. Um, that is what I saw. Uh, so what I ended up doing is kind of compromising. Um, I put the fan on to kind of help my eye and take up the gap in between the radiator uh, or grill shell and the engine. And it worked out pretty good. Uh, it wasn't nearly as bad once I put some of those parts on to take up space. Uh, the radiator ends up being just a little bit smaller than the radiator in uh, Go to City Coupe, which I've been driving around a ton. It's pretty good. Um, it's not like it instantly overheats the second you sit in traffic. So this one should be kind of the same way um, with it being a similar size. Uh, the other thing I ended up doing was I was kind of stuck on how to hang the radiator. Uh, I was thinking about making little tabs that came off the side, but I didn't know if they were strong enough. Uh, etc. etc. What I ended up doing is just kind of looking for some inspiration. I found, um, I think the name of the shop is, is Binbrook Speed. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing the, the name of the shop, but uh, he or those guys built, uh, restyled or built a really cool 2627 uh, T coupe that's like a pur shade of purple that's really bitching. Um, has a ton of carburetors on it. It just looks awesome. It, it really makes me want to build a T coupe. Uh, but anyways, he has his grill kind of sitting the same way. I think it's actually even chopped possibly more than this one. And he has these just real simple kind of angle iron brackets, if you will, or, or bent brackets that I can kind of zoom in on Instagram and, and, and see those. So I took some inspiration from that. Uh, I don't want to claim this is just my idea. I just took some inspiration from that. I tried to make them a little slim, more slim and, and smaller uh, because of how small this car is to try and hide them. And I think it will work out pretty good. I just took some 5 8 steel, uh, heat it and bend it like you saw in shops earlier. And uh, then I welded it to the frame where the radiator would have mounted. And then I just relocated the holes on the bottom. It mounts on the radiator like it would have originally. And uh, I can make some um, rods here to go from the radiator to the cow and should be really sturdy and strong. Uh, I think I'm going to try and figure out a way to run the original uh, springs or a spring type setup for the bolt at the bottom just so we can avoid any type of uh, cracking or damage to the radiator from everything flexing around. You really do need those bolts with the springs on like they had originally. Uh, it kind of helps the grill flow around with the, uh, with the car and the frame when you're going over uneven ground and things like that. Um, so, the other last kind of thing to note is that I had to push the grill just far enough in front of the cross member to actually allow room for uh, when Chris that's building my radiators from Dick's radiator here in Potsdam, PA, uh, local shop, uh, I need the, the water necks on the bottom to actually kind of do a 90 and come up um, straight up because when they come straight out, they would have went basically under the cross member and through the spring and Anybody that knows anything can probably figure out what would happen if it was like that. The suspension would uh, potentially interfere and we could have some major issues uh, when the suspension compresses fully. So, I had to put the radiator out just a little further than I wanted. I wanted it jammed against the cross member, but I put it out. Uh, I think it's about two inches from the core in front of the uh, cross member. And 
that will allow enough room to sneak the water next up, then I can run a hose down, everything should jive and be peachy. So that, that's kind of the idea. So um, I'm pretty good here. I'm happy with it. Uh, I just have stuff tacked. Um, and I can do a little more adjustment once we uh, get a little further with the car. But for now, this is good. I can take the grill and the radiator, uh, or at least the radiator, over the Chris and have him start putting a core in it and kind of putting my mess together into a nice, complete, new-ish <laughs> radiator. Um, and I will be adjusting this fan so that it sits a little bit lower, trimming the blades down, and everything should work pretty good, I think, after all this is done. And in the end, I actually really do like the proportions of the car, even a little better when I look back at some old photos of the radiator sitting on top of the cross member. I think it just gave it a little bit better proportions, so I'm okay with it. So it worked out. It's funny how these cars kind of tell you what they need or how they uh, need to come together if you kind of look and listen. So um, that's another big project done. Uh, we are hopefully getting near done all the fabrication for mechanical type stuff and it's just tying up loose ends, a little bit of sheet metal, and I'm really pushing hard to, uh, in August, start doing bodywork uh, to the tub, and uh, maybe, just maybe, if everything works out right, the uh, Gasket Goon show in September, we can maybe uh, get it there if uh, the stars align. Let's hope so. So that's all I got guys, thanks for listening to me ramble, watch me scratch my head, uh, as always we do videos on the free tea on Tuesdays, uh, Fridays we kind of got a mixed bag of videos going, whether it is the Sweetheart Roaster, which I kind of have on ice right now, um, Tools That Don't Suck, uh, Swap Meets Adventures, uh, Swap Kush, and uh, soon we're going to be peppering in some videos of uh, Andrew's little first hot rod project. Uh, whenever we start getting back on that thing, or started on that thing rather. So, thanks guys, appreciate it. Catch you later.